Hi, it's Jenna from Trans by Jeff. Uh, today is Wednesday, so it's my day in. Uh, this week, our topic's going to be uh, voice, voice, and voice therapy, and how that can help you uh, pass in the world. I almost feel like um, this should have been part of stealth because voice is one of those things that will um, give you away. Uh, besides broad shoulders. <laughs> I kept a cheat sheet today because I wanted to make sure that um, I got through everything that I wanted uh, to talk about. Um, so I guess there's a couple, I have different feelings on voice therapy. Um, I have a friend that's a, a coach for voice therapy at New York City and she has an exquisite voice and uh, before that she sounded like a radio DJ, real deep low, <laughs> and um, Kara, you probably know who I'm talking about, um, but so there is things that you can do without surgery. Um, I, I think hormonally, really, the hormones don't have any impact on you maybe later in life, but maybe earlier in life. We could stop some of the, the puberty stuff that will help you develop a more feminine voice. Um, so for, if you're a M to F, it's a lot more difficult than if you are a F to M. F to M's get on testosterone and right away their vocal cords thicken and they drop into a very masculine voice which helps them blend a whole lot better because part of blending is not only is it, the, like I said, the, the visual aspect, but also um, your voice. Your voice um, gives you away. Um, very difficult even after going through um, voice coaching and counseling. Sometimes you'll still get clicked on the phone, or I have anyway, um, because the phone is kind of the, the reproduction of a phone is kind of more made for a man's voice than a woman's. Imagine that they still <laughs> that they would have preference in that in that arena also. <laughs> um, but if you are a um, younger person, then the hormones, by of course, will uh, help help you do that. But if you go through puberty as a male and then transition to female later in life, the damage is usually done and the thickening of the vocal cords is done. So it's really hard to do anything with that. There are options. There is, you can do self-help with your own, buy some, you know, DVDs, um, finding your feminine voice is, you know, I used early on, um, which helps you find a commonplace, uh, males and females, regardless um, if you're cis or, or you're trans. We share uh, a common chord, C, and so we can alter our voice to get to that C position. And a part of that, Andrea James, and finding your female voice also will um, help you find that C spot, as will a counselor, and some, that's some of what a counselor will do for you. And then um, you can work on that. It takes hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of practice and changing, um, singing uh, something from a newspaper or reading a newspaper out loud or singing in the shower and finding that C place where you can get there constantly. In time it gets easier and easier and easier to get there. And you'll find that it's more difficult to back away from that. I do it when I'm angry. If somebody gets me really angry and pushes the buttons, pushes the buttons to, to get the old alpha male personality out of me, oh, I'll go back there. <laughs> and it's not pretty. And then I'm angry. I'm angry at myself, and then I'm angry at the person that did it to me um, for obviously more than one reason. First, for whatever the problem was that we were experiencing. Hi, Mira. And secondly, oh, hi, baby. And secondly, at, at myself for letting them get me there. Um, so there are things you can do with developing your own voice and practice and, and um, there are, you know, obviously there's things on the internet to help you with that. Um, 
when the, you know, so the self-help is there, and also the DVDs and the, the videos and stuff, they're on the YouTube, they're, they're in various places, you can find that help. Um, another option that um, is, is available is surgery, and um, I'm not sold on surgery, um, personally. Um, I think you can achieve passable results um, if you work really hard yourself. Um, so, and, and, you know, part of, of that, finding that C feminine range that we share, males and females share, is inflection. Um, your voice, um, should, should I do this? <laughs> um, you can be very, uh, uh, use inflection in your voice. Girls um, talk in a, a melody, like a wave that kind of goes along and men are, are short to the point. So I could say to you that um, I love my handicapped cat mirror. Or I could say to you, I like my handicapped cat mirror. Um, and there's two different ways of saying the, the same thing. And one would have been from a more masculine place, which is harder for me to get back to. Um, excuse me, then it is to, to find that C range where I'm at and be comfortable. So I think that's, you know, a better place to, to work. Um, the surgery, uh, for those who have done it, if you don't do the inflection stuff work and you don't find that C range, usually the surgery will undo itself. You'll go back to what you want because playing with vocal cords that have been thickened and hardened is, is difficult to modify or some results of, you know, are, have been disastrous. You sound like a uh, like Minnie Mouse. <laughs> so um, the idea is to find a, a, a common spot, and, and part of I guess finding that voice is, is comfort for yourself, but also to help you blend or stealth. That was our last topic. Um, and for younger people, it's probably more of an issue. But for somebody like me, I um, I found a spot where I'm kind of comfortable at, and that's kind of where I stay. I don't try, I could probably make it better and better and better, but I've kind of, a lot of water's gone over the dam at this point in my life, and, and I'm not really out to impress anybody or try to hide too much. So I don't worry too much about that. The other thing that I found early on was, that was important for me, was, um, I, you know, I had, uh, social groups, you know, um, whatever they be, whether they be business or they would be with friends or in a work environment or, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a volunteer firefighter and um, in my past life I was an alpha male and so everybody kind of knew that person. So part of what I did during my transition was let them see the physical change and not so much the voice. And I kind of hid that from them. And then slowly found, a, you know, if, if tweaked that over a long period of time because I knew that they were, I wanted them to come along for the ride with me and I didn't want, I didn't want to come in sounding like a Barbie doll. And I wanted to be more of a mature uh, female that was in their peer group. And I just felt personally for me during transition was I really blew a bomb up in, in the fire department and then had to, to find a place where we were all comfortable. So I mean, there's times when somebody will call me individually from the company and I'll answer the phone with my feminine voice and they'll, they'll ask if Jenna's there. <laughs> So um, I have to say it's me. <laughs> um, but uh, so there, you know, there, there's times for me during transition that I would use my older voice um, for let's call them self-preservation political reasons and um, to, to, to ease the impact of my transition on other people. And then there's times where, you know, no one knows me and once they click you as female, 
then your voice is important, but it's not as important. Once that visual click I found is done where you've been ID and people make that snap judgment, male, female, uh, after that, you don't have to be as worried with your voice. Now, of course, you have to be on the game and you have to be inflective and you have to have the mannerisms and that type of stuff that, that builds the whole package, so to speak. So, um, I, I, I find that I, less and less and less I um, use the old me and more and more and more I've gotten to this spot in C where I'm kind of comfortable. Um, could my voice be better? Absolutely. Am I going to spend all the time trying to make it better? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, you see, what you see is what you get. Um, uh, and uh, that's the way it's going to be, because I really don't care what anybody thinks. Um, I will tell you um, that I am conscious in stores of how I talk to somebody. Because if I go into Home Depot and I'm going to buy a manly tool, I certainly don't want that to, to plant um, the idea that something else is going on behind the visual aspect of me. So I, I'm a little bit more on my game in that kind of stuff but, than I would be otherwise. You know, um, so those are the kind of things for me that. Um, Working on your voice is important. Um, uh, I, I, I know some, some transgender people. I was involved with a national transgender organization for a while. And there were some people that, that um, didn't, you know, they would tell you they were a girl, but they would talk and, and their mannerisms and behavior was all male. And for them, maybe that's okay, but for me, it's not. So, you know, uh, I think as you're transitioning in that timeline that you're going through the process of wherever you're going to end up ultimately, whether it's surgery and everything or not, to, you know, I think if you, if you work on those little pieces, the whole package comes together uh, at the same time instead of waiting till after. Um, I have noticed some people that um, when I started transitioning back and um, Oh, around 2002, 2001, some people that were um, that were on uh, a site that no longer exists at this point, it kind of imploded. Uh, um, people that I, I got to be friends with, I happened to run back into. And um, this girl had gone through all she could do to, to change her voice and alter it. And eventually she came back to sounding kind of guyish. Um, so I think it's different for all of us, you know, where we find that comfort at and, and do we really care at one point, at some point in time, knowing that we're never going to be a genetic female. Do you find a comfort spot and that's where you settle on your voice? Um, so this is a great topic. At first I didn't think I'd have anything to talk about, but as I um, sat at my desk working and I something would go through the back of my mind and go, yeah, write that down, write that down, it's a good idea. So um, I'm glad that the topic was put out. I'm not sure if this was Jen that threw this one out there, but if so, thank you. Uh, I'm interested to hear what's worked for other people, if there was something that I missed or left out, because um, obviously there's no one way to do something, uh, and it's different, it works differently. Everybody has their own way of doing things, so I'd like to hear some of your experiences and, and how you cope with that and, um, and, and how people accept that new voice when they hear it. Because I, I kind of enjoy it 